Hello and welcome to the basement. On this episode, we're going to take this piece of deer antler and try and make a new nut for this five string bass. All right, so before I get into the video and show you how I went about making this bass guitar nut, I want to give you a little bit of an explanation as to why I decided to do this. So first and foremost, I've had this bass for several years. And since I got my newer five string bass from Ibanez, that SR805FF that you've seen me play on a couple of my other videos, uh, this thing has not really gotten much love. And you know how it is, whenever you're a musician and you get a newer instrument, that one seems to get all the attention. So anyway, this one was just sitting on the wall collecting dust, not doing anything productive. So I decided, let's see how we can breathe some new life into it. And what gave me the idea for this was seeing a YouTube video by a phenomenal musician by the name of Evan Brewer. Now, Evan is a bass guitar specialist. This guy is just an incredible musician, does some crazy techniques, and it's just, he's just amazing to watch. So if you've never seen him or not familiar with any of his music, especially his solo projects, I strongly encourage you to check him out. But anyway, this one particular video caught my eye, and he was playing a ESP bass that looked very, very similar to this, and ESP is the parent company to LTD, which this is, and that caught my eye instantly, and when I was watching and listening, I was like, man, that tuning is really different, and uh, he goes on to explain that he had uh, set this up for a tuning of E through C, and basically what that is, if you take a six-string bass guitar and you drop off that low B, that's what you're left with. You're left with E through C. And I thought, man, that's pretty interesting. I've never heard or seen anybody do that with a five string bass because most people do like I did. The reason for getting that five string bass is that low B, which is just a phenomenal, phenomenal expansion to the range of a bass guitar. But he went the other way with it. He went a string higher versus a string lower. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So I thought, man, you know what? I should probably do that. I've got two five-string basses. No need to have them set up the same way with the same tunings. Maybe that will bring me back to this instrument. So that's where this whole idea went from. So I ordered a set of six-string bass strings, and I slapped them on, minus the low B, of course. And of course, this nut that I had custom-made by Smoothstone Guitars out of Villarica, Georgia. Great luthier, does phenomenal work, especially if you want a custom acoustic guitar build. That's the guy to see. But anyway, I had to make this nut special because I, I was playing the thickest five string bass strings I could find at the time. And the, the factory nut just wasn't set up for it. And I didn't feel confident in widening the slots to accept those bigger strings. So I had to make this one for me. Problem was when I slapped those six string bass strings set on this guitar, obviously a much thinner gauge because I'm not using the same tuning the strings were just buzzing out on the frets and making it difficult to play and certainly not not easy on the ear. So that's really where this whole idea for this project came from. So a friend of mine harvested a deer this past winter, this past hunting season, and he happened to get a spike buck and I asked him if I could get one of those antlers from him so I could do this project. And of course he agreed and that brings us here. So without further ado, let's get into the actual build project and show you how I tried to do this. All right, so my first step here is to remove the truss rod cover because it's butted up right against that nut and is preventing it from moving. Then I loosen up all the strings and you can see it just comes right off. It's not glued down. All right, so this is gonna serve as our template for size as well as for string alignment. So let me put this off to the side get this base off the bench and we'll get started. So next I trace out the straightest section in the antler that I can find and I take my miter box handsaw and just start hacking away at it to trim out uh, what will eventually be the nut blank. So I figured the best way to shape this thing, square, is to use the disc sander, belt sander that I, I have. And as soon as I start putting it on there, man, it smells like barbecued dog hair. So I put on a respirator, which is fortunate because, man, there, you can see a ton of dust flying. And I definitely don't want to be breathing that in. 
So what I'm trying to do is just square up all the faces and make a square profile to the, to the blank to kind of work from. Then I trace out uh, the radius of the n existing nut onto this one, and I try and get as close to it as I can without taking off too much material. Then what I try to do is I try to put in a little bit of a beveled edge on the back end that kind of follows the headstock break angle. Um, my existing nut has that in there, and I think that just brings the strings closer to the tuning pegs. I try to do some final shaping with a file, but quickly realize my crappy files aren't removing enough material. So I quickly go back to the sander, really taking my time, taking off as little material as I can, and constantly double checking to make sure I'm not removing too much. So now I just kind of finish up and make sure everything's perfectly flat with a sanding block and just kind of trim up that profile, the beveled edge profile, so it's not so harsh of an angle. And I'm pretty pleased with it initially. I did cut it a little thin, uh, but you know, if I have to start all over, I'll start all over, no big deal. So next I rough in the slots for the strings using my nut slotting files. And again, I'm just trying to get it just set up. And I'm doing a dry fit here just to make sure everything is, is aligned properly and I don't have any issues that would cause me to have to start over at this point. So once I determine it is good to go, at least for now, I go ahead and pull it back off and I grab my Dremel tool with a felt wheel and some polishing compound just to kind of clean it up and pretty it up. If I had it to do over again, I probably would have used a few more grits of sandpaper, getting it as smooth as I could on sandpaper first, but I had already shaped it a little too thin, so I didn't want to remove too much material. Now, it's interesting that this deer antler is really porous compared to a cow femur, which is what the other nut's made out of, but it looks really interesting, so I'm kind of pleased with it. So I grab what files I do have to try and match the string gauges as closely as I can. Now I wish I would have had some string height space gauges or feeler gauges or something just to make sure I you know, could systematically get the string height correct. But I'm just doing this by feel because I have no idea what it is I'm doing anyway. It required a lot of fine tuning, a lot of back and forth, a few truss rod, truss rod adjustments, but I eventually got it pretty close. There's still some fine tuning I need to do, but I can clean that up later. But man, I'm really digging how interesting it looks. It's definitely got a lot more character. For such a small piece of the guitar, it's at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of interesting. So I'm putting a little CA glue and some accelerant just to glue it down, keep everything stable and not moving. And then I clean up the uh, fretboard with a little lemon oil um, while I've got the strings out of the way. So now I've done that. Let's get it tuned up and see what she sounds like. This tuning is definitely different than what I'm used to, so I'm thinking I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to learn how to incorporate this high C string. Um, I've got a little bit of refinement to do because it feels like my finger, when I'm playing over on the the strings, the you know the G, 
and above, it feels like I'm hitting this C string. It seems like it's a little high. So I'm buzzing it out just a little bit with my finger.